point, let's start our last session of short communication today. And we will start a session about what? what? Ah, women's sexuality. And we will start with uh, Antonietta, uh, who used to be my postdoc. And she will talk about our, our project on relationship of body image and self-esteem with makeup. Uh, usage in women, so it's your turn. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, good afternoon. Thank you for your pr presence here. So, we can tell you about a little bit about my postdoc research. So, as Yaka Red said, the, that's the, the title Relationship of Body Image and Self Same with Makeup Usage. My name is Antonietta. And my co-authors are here too, I think you know them, Caio, Marco and Iarca. So when you talk about uh, women's attractiveness, we know that it's an important factor for women's life because it affects how they feel about themselves. If you think about evolutionary psychology theory, we can use the Buzz and Schmidt sexual strategic theory that says that men and women have evolved distinct physiological mechanisms that underlie short-term and long-term strategies. So men, for long and short-term, in general, they rather female appearance because it's, it's a clue for their fertility. So, so that's why women evolved a little bit, not necessarily just to this matter only, but at, when, you compare, when we compare men and women, they tend to, tend to put a lot of pressure, and there, has, there is more social pressure about the women's body than the, men's, than the male body. So, appearance enhancement is a self-promotion strat strategy, so it captures more attention from others to enhance women's attractivity to look better than the same pair. So you want to look better than they, they, your comp competitor. And there are various tactics such as high heels, cosmetic surgeries, or makeup. High heels, for example, it doesn't change only your body, but your movements. So you have a shorter pace and you have the swing. So there are a lot of things that you can change, not necessarily just your physical appearance. So studies found a positive relationship between attractiveness and self in women. Also, physical appearance is positively correlated with appearance satisfaction. So people who feel, who feel that they are more beautiful, they are more satisfied with the, their appearance and positive relationship between appearance evaluation and general self-esteem. And about self-esteem, we have basically, well, we can say that we have two. One is general self-esteem and social self-esteem. Social self-esteem is more affected by social interactions than general self-esteem. General self-esteem is how the person feels about themselves how they, they compare, they tend to compare to, to another person with another person and then see how they, they fit. They, they value it in comparison to the others. But when we are talking about social self-esteem, it's how the individuals, feels, the individuals feel about themselves during social interactions and their social interactions affect their social value somehow. So, about the makeup, more, more specifically, we have, uh, this is one of our studies. So, we found that it, in an experimental study, compared women self-possession without makeup and with uh, makeup applied for a prof with a pro professional, so it was six, six phase makeup that we, the professional made, made these women up, and they found that the women 
consider themselves more feminine, more attractive, more satisfied with appearance and have, and have higher self-esteem when they were with makeup than without. Hobbitson uh, and colleagues also found that women who, had, who rated themselves lower on physical attractiveness used more makeup. So our aim was to investigate if makeup usage in women, and we measured three, three things, that was frequency of makeup usage, money that they spent on makeup but per month, and the time that it's, they spend applying makeup per day. It's predicted by general social self seems and body image. But body image, we have two constructs. One of them is evaluation, appearance evaluation, that the, the person is how the person is satisfied with the, uh, own body, own looks, and appearance orientation, that is the important the person gives to always bring dress up, always to the grooming, to always looks nice. So the methods we investigated, it wasn't the final analysis, right? We had a lot of participants, was online questionnaire, but in the final analysis, only 1,483 Brazilian women between 18 and 65 years participated in that. The mean age was 31. And most few women with, well, were with graduated degrees, they had already graduated, were right and declared the family income for approximately five, uh, $500. It, although we did the exchange, because it was in Brazilian reais that we asked, from 500 to 1,000. So we collected data through Qualtrics. We asked about uh, social questionnaire questions, questions such as age, ethnicity, relationship status, current uh, social economic status as well. Uh, adapted version version of the cosmetic user inventory. It's a seven point scale that we ask them from never to always the frequency they use each one of these product, the, this cosmet, base, mascara, line, shade, lipstick. So, and all, all, of the, all of the type of cosmetics were related. So, a, a woman who tends to use more lipstick, for example, she also tends to use more mascara, the other kinds of, the other kind of makeup. So, but we did not, uh, uh, we did not ask just this. We also added some questions about the expense, the monthly expense with makeup and the, and the time spent up applying makeup per day. We also asked ourselves, because it was also what we want to investigate. So social self-esteem, we use the Lawson, Lawson scale. It's a 30 item instrument with six points like a scale. And it measures one's ability to deal with different social, uh, different so social situations. For example, I make friends easily. And we also used the Rosenbach self-esteem scale, general, but this were measures, uh, measures general self-esteem. That is the individual's feeling about themselves. For example, on the whole, I'm satisfied with myself. We use it, it, this, this questionnaire contains 10 affirmation about the person, how to say, and it's a four, Four point Likert scale. Both Alpha Combra were, were good. Also, the Alpha, the Alpha Combra from the body image scale from the Ixop was also, also, was also good. And the body image, as I said, there are two 
So this chaos, two constructs, and it's a 17 item instrument, 11 of them related to appearance orientation. That is, for example, it's important that I always look good. And six of them is appearance evaluation. For example, I like my looks just the way they are. So the results, we analyzed, we did uh, three categorical regression models, one for each type of makeup usage. So we did, uh, you, we use it, you, sorry, we use it, dependent variables, uh, money, time, and frequency of makeup usage, and as independent variables, so self same social and general self same and body image, and also we put some social demographic variables such as fa age, family income, and educational level because we want to control the variability. So here we see that frequency and time spent was positively predicted by appearance orientation, so how they, they think that is important. The look is important for them, for them and age. So women that are older and women who give more importance to, the, to always look good tend to, to use makeup more frequently and spend more money on makeup. More, more, no, sorry, more time on makeup. Here we see we can see that everything was a predictor, at, except for except from educational level. At the same in the same direction, was appearance orientation was post positively predicted, age also, family income, and social self esteem. So social self-esteem, you can see here, that is going the same direction as appearance orientation, while general self-esteem is going the same direction, that is inversely proportional to appearance evaluation. So women who tend to find themselves are more satisfied with their appearance, they invest less money on makeup. So our find suggests that women who feel more comfortable with their appearance and have higher general self-esteem, they are really confident and satisfied with the, their appearance, including related to others. They spend, more, uh, spend less money on makeup, whereas uh, while women with higher self-esteem spend more money with makeup. So social self esteem sorry. It's going the same direction that Robert uh, and colleagues found, that is a negative association between cosmetic usage and self-rated physical appearance. Also, women who give more importance to their appearance orientation, to always being dressed up and look good, spend more money on makeup, more time applying makeup, and also wear it more frequently. It's, it goes the same duration again with the Robertson findings. There's a positive relationship between cosmetic usage and self-presentation, and also with uh, it's a, and also with a result that family and friends used to talk appearance but not about the bodies. So people, when they come to you to talk about something that you look, it, they usually don't say, oh, you look fat, oh, you look thin. They try, oh, nice shirt, oh, your, your hairstyle, good. So it's another cool, it suggests to that appearance orientation is also more susceptible to social influence that appearance evaluation. So social self seems is a positive predictor of money, makeup, uh, money spent makeup per month. So Gentina and colleagues said that adolescent girls reported to use more to use makeup because they want to feel admired by the public. So and also besides that, 
They also think that it is a ritual from the teenagers to get to the adulthood. And makeup also can be used as a strategy to enhance social status. So the conclusion, our conclusion is that our study suggests that makeup uses may enhance women's confidence to deal with social situation. And also there are a lot of, lot of uh, studies that say that women are considered to be more confident, have more prestige, and higher so <laughs> so sexuality as well. But <laughs> there are a lot of things that are attribute to besides health and etc. And women with greater social self-esteem gave more importance to their appearance, resulting in more makeup usage. So thank you very much. If you have some questions, I will have to say. Other questions, please? No? It's okay, you can talk to me later. <laughs> so, so our next talk, okay. <laughs> our next talk is Larissa. So Larissa is from UFRN, Federal University from Rio Grande do Norte. And she's uh, my ex-supervisor student, and <laughs> so it's kind of home too. And she's going to present girls when I have more than fun. Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Antonieta said, my name is Larissa Alves, and I'm a graduate student from uh, Laboratório de Evolução do Comportamento Humano. I am a Phoebe's student. <laughs> and let's start. Okay, uh, mate market has some variables, okay? Uh, they are partner availability, um, desired qualities, uh, market value, and evaluation of an ideal partner. Um, that's different uh, from a real partner, okay? Uh, market value can be configured by how much the individual presents characteristics that uh, can be desired by a potential partner, okay? Um, and uh, that's com compared to the competitor, so it's like a competition, a competition area. Uh, in this case, uh, we are going to use uh, mark self-perceived market value. Uh, in other words, there is self-evaluation. Uh, individual differences can influence mate, mate choice and it can vary according with sex and sexual orientation. The aims of the study were um, to verify if the attractiveness domain of women's self-perception can be related with the idealization of a romantic partner um, for short-term relationships, okay? Um, and investigate differences according to um, sexual orientation and characteristics preferred for a long-term partner in a speed dating. So, you should be asking me, what is a speed dating? Um, I presume um, Brazilian people in audience, uh, at least the ones who was born before 2000s, are similar with the term Sessão da Tarde. <laughs> Sessão da Tarde to the, to the non-Brazilian people present here in the audience 
It's a TV program that uh, exhibits old movies, really. Most of them repeated tons of time. <laughs> um, and in this program, uh, Pes, a uh, really uh, famous movie in Brazil that hit the cure for a common man. Um, in Portuguese, I think it's hit o conselheiro amoroso. So in this movie, this is a super uh, Sessão da Tarde classic, okay? Uh, in this movie, there is a scene, this one, uh, the past, I speed dating. Uh, one of you guys remember this movie? Um, okay, so in other words, speed dating, um, it's short uh, dates, uh, then people paired up, and they have a, a few minutes to meet uh, a, lot of, a lot of people. So um, when you go to something like this, you should know or don't uh, what do you want in a partner, okay? <laughs> so 42 participants accept to participate to this work. Um, 17 non-heterosexual and 25 heterosexual women. Uh, they were all single, uh, over 18 years old, and recruitment. It was uh, through the poster and social media. Uh, after to accept to participate, uh, and um, they sign an agreement term, and they answer a questionnaire. Um, a questionnaire for self-perception as a romantic partner, and idealization for short and long-term partner according to three domains. They are attractiveness, that can be beautiful face, pretty body, um, health, and sociability, that can be social, um, good humor, um, fidelity, and resource, that can be um, finance, intelligence, and Yes, that's it. <laughs> so, in speed dating, uh, I, I told you guys that they speak with each other for, for a few minutes. And in this speed dating specific, um, they talk with three minutes in interaction with each participant. And at the end, they answer the questionnaire uh, to choose a partner. So. Uh, the participants could choose more than one partner, a partner for a short-term relationship and a partner for a long-term relationship. So they talk freely. Uh, there is not actually a questionnaire that they could ask um, to meet the, the person. They talk what they want to talk for three minutes and uh, change the participant until everybody has to talk with each one, okay? Okay, um, to see the normality uh, of the data, uh, we use Shapiro Wilk. Experiment test um, to make a correlation between self perception attractiveness domain with the other domains. Um, to investigate the differences according to sexual orientation, we use T test to parametric data and man Whitney to non parametric data. Um, okay. This is a correlation graph, and the blue color means that's a positive correlation, and the red color means that's a negative correlation. So the bigger the circle, the bigger the correlation, okay? So here, it's a non-heterosexual women correlation graph, and we can see that for short term, the self-evaluation attractiveness domain has a positive correlation with short-term attractiveness idealization, okay? And we also can see that for long-term, they have also an attractiveness, uh, also <laughs> a positive correlation to the attractiveness idealization in their self-evaluation attractiveness. This is a correlation from heterosexual women, women. and uh, to short term, we couldn't see. Uh, there is not a correlation, but when we see it, that's interesting. For long term, uh, the self-evaluation attractiveness domain has a positive correlation attractive, uh, with the attractiveness idealization and uh, the domain of resource also. 
Um, so here, it's uh, to analyze the differences between sexual orientation, okay? So in this bar chart, we can see that uh, the attractiveness domain of to uh, uh, non-heterosexual women and heterosexual women, we couldn't see the difference. But when analyzed these block spots, these two block spots graphs, um, we can see that heterosexual women idealize a partner that is score more in social and resource domain than non-heterosexual women. Uh, okay, and to conclude, uh, the idealization differences may be related with the highest demand of heterosexual women uh, for characteristics in their partners associated to investment in their children. So, the relation between higher attractiveness and higher idealization shows that non-heterosexual women are looking for other characteristics, fewer relationed with uh, uh, investment in children, different than the heterosexual women that uh, choose partners that have a higher scores in other domains that I show you that was uh, resource and social. And that's it. Um, thank you guys. That was my first presentation. <laughs> and I really appreciate it. Questions? So, questions? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you Thanks, can talk to me Lisa. later also. <laughs> <laughs> and now, vai abrir lá. Now it's the co-author of my presentation. Or you have some question? Okay. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, I've got one question that you said that non-heterosexual women uh, tend to value other aspects either than uh, resources and social, social ability, but it was not clear to me what they were valuing. Could you explain it again? In Portuguese? É melhor em português. Tá. É. É, então, é isso que ficou claro para mim que a diferença né, entre mulheres heterossexuais e não heterossexuais e que as não heterossexuais valorizavam outras coisas além de recursos e aspectos sociais. né? Mas o que, que elas valorizaram? Qual que foi as correlações positivas das mulheres não heterossexuais? Não, então, eu não falei que elas não valorizavam. Exato. Eu falei que... Eu falei? Não, não, não. Ah, tá. Eu, eu <risos> Meu Deus, errado. eu gelei agora. <risos> valorizavam menos. Eu tô nervosa, gente. Espera aí, calma, deixa eu respirar. <risos> é, é porque no trabalho... Eu acho que eu posso até colocar aqui no gráfico. Oh, my God, I have to speak in English. <risos> ah, ok. Um, okay, I didn't say that they don't, uh, uh, I really didn't understand very well your question, but uh, I said that heterosexual women, when we do the correlation, they uh, have a positive correlation in the attractiveness domain of self-perception with the attractiveness domain of the, the ideal partner, because uh, the aims of the world is to see uh, this kind of correlation, okay? But when we look to heterosexual women, uh, we couldn't see this correlation between the self-perceived uh, self, uh, attraction to the idealized attraction for short term. So that's why I'm saying that heterosexual women uh, choose partners that score more, they have a higher um, uh, scores in the other domains 
because the non-heterosexual women actually, yes, they should, the attractiveness, but the heterosexual women choose uh, resource and social. Uh, I think that's clear, right? I'm sorry, the Portuguese, I was nervous. <laughs> Anyone? Any more questions? That's okay. You want to see the other one? The other one is the heterosexual women. They, they, there isn't correlation actually to, to short term. Only to when they are going to choose long. Okay? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Larissa. <laughs> and now it's Caio. Okay. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, hello, my name is Caio Silva. Uh, I'm a little nervous, so no. Be, be mindful. Uh, okay. Uh, my name is Caio Silva. I am a PhD student at University of Sao Paulo. My advisor is Professor Yaroslava Varela Valentová. Uh, today I'm here to talk to you about a small slice of my PhD research, that is the effect of the partner's characteristics on female orgasm. First, the theory behind it. One question that I heard a lot is why a man is researching about the female orgasm. And that's fine. What happened is that in my master's degree, I made a research evaluating the difference in the quality of sexual life of heterosexual women and homosexual women. I found that homosexual women had more orgasms they were happier in, with their sexual life and they wanted to have more sex than they were able to. Heterosexual women wanted, wanted to have less sex, but my data uh, wasn't able to show me why it was different. I only knew that was, there was a difference between women in a relationship with someone from the same sex and women in a relationship of different sex. So my PAD was was organized in a way so I could ask what they do, how the, this partner behaves during the sex that al allows him or her to help the women to have more orgasms. One of the first problems that I found was uh, the, the most basic, uh, the definition. There isn't a proper definition of what is a female orgasm. Most authors try to create the definitions that focus on the psychological aspects or the biological aspects, and some try to create a biopsychological uh, definition. Maston and et al., uh, they use a definition that was proposed in an international congress. Uh, it wasn't just her trying to find uh, the answer alone. It had more than 1,000 participants, 200 uh, committees, uh, 60 uh, countries being represented by professionals of sexual health, and they decided that female orgasm, uh, in the human female, is a viable transient peak sensation of intense pleasure, creating an altered state of consciousness, usually accompanied by involuntary rhythmic contractions of the pelvic striatic circumvaginal musculature often with concomitant uterine and anal contractions and miatonia that resolves the sexual-induced vasocongestion, sometimes only partially, usually with induction, induction of well-being. Or, this, is, this isn't much sensual if you pay attention, but they try to unite the biological side and psychological subjective feeling. 
But that is a problem. This definition don't take in account the women who can have orgasm by thoughts alone. Or women who can have uh, orgasm by eating a specific food, or even have orgasm while sleeping. This is a very genital focus definition. And there is another problem for us in the evolutionary field. These definitions are, like Wagner and Pavstaff said, none of the published definitions amount to anything like a definition in te technical sense. At most, they can be seen as descriptive characterizations of what one calls an orgasm in women. None of these definitions are suitable for a broader comparative study of evolutionary roots of female orgasm. So we can compare the subject feelings with another primate, if you wanted. I, I remember reading an article recently about uh, if he rats have orgasm or not. The author uh, said they, they, he was sure that the female rat felt intense pleasure. I don't know how he could say that, but he, he did. There are a lot of possible functions for, for the female orgasm. There is a, the history about the study of the evolutionary functions is full of speculations and very little that data to support them. Some of the possible functions are it positively reinforces the behavior, uh, encourage pursuit of sex, uh, it encourages to form intimate relationships because it releases oxytocin. It signals satisfaction. Satisfaction helps uh, the men, uh, main, uh, principal, principally, ma mainly, because uh, the sperm competition. If the woman is satisfied, there is a lower chance that she will try to find another partner to have sex. There is also the theory that female orgasm helps uh, sperm transport, but this one, I believe, is the weakest from all, because most studies couldn't find the uh, data to support that. What they found actually f was that uh, Levine, he said that female orgasm, in fact, delays the sperm transport, not helps, but it delays because when the sperm is inside the vagina and, and the clitoris is stimulated, the female body release substance that capacitate the sperm so it will be able to make the travel to the egg. So instead of helping the transport, it will delay, but with a, with a good reason. And finally, it increases testosterone levels. It just, try, just brings benefits in general to the women. Uh, so through my project, I got two main hypotheses. They, they are based based in two ideas. One, not every intercourse results in female orgasm, so a convincing evolutionary hypothesis must explain the irregularity of which it occurs. And oh, orgasm can serve a variety of context-sensitive functions. What do I mean by context-sensitive functions? The first uh, researchers had a problem trying to understand why the female orgasm happens more frequently in a long-term relationship and why it happens more frequently with partners who show signs of good genes. They, they all thought that there, was, there should be one definitive situation that bo could, bro could bring more orgasms. But yeah, they thought that it was contradictory. But in fact, the, the answer is very simple. In one situation, the female is selecting a specific kind of partner. In the other situation, she is selecting another partner. The main hypothesis is the side choice. Female orgasm acts as a mechanism by which women increase their chance of conceiving with men of superior genetic quality. And pair bond, it works to physiological and psychological be behavioral link the women with a higher investment potential partner. And another theory that I found in, in my I, I added a new questionnaire because of that, is that female orgasm may select empathic uh, partners. Because as they said, you have to be able to delay your own pleasure and pay attention to your partners. 
and see what they need to reach orgasm. And this kind of self-control would only be possible with men or women with high levels of empathy. Present study. My main objective here, uh, to investigate a possible influence of partners' characteristics on frequency and quality of female orgasm. Our sample was composed of 981 women from mean age of 27 years. Uh, all participants were over 18 years old, uh, and they had sexual acti active sexual life in the last six months. Uh, the participants also answered three questionnaires that I, I will show to you. Uh, 874 male partners and 107 female partners. They were all invited through social media, uh, mainly Instagram. I paid to Instagram to advertise my research. It was very successful. I got a lot of uh, clicks, uh, 2,070 2, clicks on my link. And in the end, 1,300 1, complete answers. This is what I used on my social media. I contracted a friend to do this ad. Uh, there is a, a fun fact about QR code. Yeah, I, 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 I heartily uh, suggest you to use, not because people click or use the QR code, in fact, but they see a QR code, they think you are a professional. They, they, <laughs> they think it's a more serious research, even if they don't use it. A lot of people came to me to, to talk about, oh, you have a QR code, nice, né? such technology. It was cool. So use it. The instruments, uh, they are all available online on Qualtrics because of the pandemic. Unfortunately, unfortunately we, had, we had to delay their data collection because people's sexual life was different because of the pandemic. So I was afraid that I, my data would so only represent the sexual life affected by COVID, not the general sexual life. So, I used Marital Empathy Questionnaire, 36 items in which participants evaluate their spouses, informing how often they perform certain actions. It had behavioral empathy, cognitive, and emotional. Female Sexual Function Index, FSFI, uh, 19 questions that address six domains of sexual response, desire, arousal, lubrification, orgasm, the focus of this work, satisfaction, and pain. We had two versions of the FSFI. It was the for heterosexual relationship and homosexual relationship. And sexual partner characteristics. Uh, I asked seven questions. Uh, I asked about seven characteristics of the partner, and the participant could uh, give a score from minus three to plus three. Uh, I asked about the level of kindness, intelligence, health, physical attractiveness, income or financial prospects. Femininity, masculinity, and dominance. Method. Uh, first, uh, the first batch of uh, data analysis was exploratory. We made some correlations and we found, found only weak correlations. So even our regression was able only to explain 60% of the variation. So I had to be creative and think about, well, well I, I'm using all the participants at the same time, and I can't find a characteristic that influences the occurrence of orgasm. But what if females, women, with different easiness to achieve orgasm have different partners? So I got the question about, uh, oh, sorry, the question about, uh, Easiness to have orgasm alone and using to interact with all the independent variables. Our, our results show that easiness to have orgasm alone explains 28% of the variation of the orgasm domain. Or what means that if a woman who is able to reach orgasm alone, uh, this, ability, this, this skill helps her a lot to have orgasm with a partner. And you have some results that I find they are very interesting and I'm trying to explain. You can see here, 
women who have a very difficult time to reach orgasm alone, when their partner has higher behavioral empathy, their sexual life is worse. And you, you, ask, you start to wonder, but isn't this a, a good characteristic? Won't, won't it be useful for her to have orgasm? I have a theory. Perhaps in this kind of relationship, the, the fact that the partner has a high level of empathy, behavioral empathy, is what keeps the couple together. Probably the sex isn't important, so higher empathy, worse sexual life, but they keep together because of the empathy. Also, women who have easy time to reach orgasm, the partner intelligence also negative in impact. And I start to wonder if you are uh, the dumber, the better, I don't know. But it may be the fact that females who have an easy time to reach orgasm, they would have orgasm anyway. So the partner characteristic in this case, in this specific case, doesn't count. Some of the, my conclusions are in limitations. The results show that the characteristics and level of empathy of the partner have an impact on the frequency of orgasm, but I need to understand better how they impact and why. The partner-related variables have different impacts depending on the needs of the participant. The data analysis is still in progress, so it's, it's, it's a work in progress. And the overall FSFI FS, FS, score and orgasm domain did not show normal distribution. Most of our sample had high scores in the sexual life and orgasm. This is far from the normal, from the population, which means that we probably uh, invited or were, we invited people who liked sex a lot and this had an impact in our results. Thank you. Thank you for the talk, Kyle. Does someone want to have any questions? Uh, thank you. Um, you, you, s you used the word uh, compassion or altruism for the, the partner. Who, who you can't you can hear. Or, it's okay. Okay. Uh, you used the word. Uh, I don't think I get it. Uh, compassion or altruism to evaluate the, the partner role in female orgasms, what was the, the word you used? No. Empathy, empathy. Uh, how do you assess empathy of the, the partner? We asked the women about what they felt the partner's behavior was like. I thought it was the best solution because the male partner could answer, ah, I am very empathetic, I always help her, but what, what really matters is how, uh, what she thinks about him, even if she is wrong about what he does. He does. So we ask the women. And, and also, <coughs> did you ask if the women thought that themselves were uh, empathic? No, we, we didn't ask about the, their own empathy level. Okay, th thank you. Any more questions? No? So thank you very much. <laughs> and you want to? So I think it that Kadeya. So thank you. Thank you very much for today and for the presence of you all. If you want to talk to me about my presentation, because you didn't like, <laughs> it's okay, uh, kidding, because you were, I was a little bit nervous and I thought, I think everybody noticed. So if you want to talk to me, I will be in the barbecue today and it's going to be at seven. Um, at,
the name of the, the barbecue is Ponteio. Ponteio. Ponteio Jaguaré will be there. So, who want to, to meet and have, and have some barbecue? Is, that, is everything you can eat? It's all you can eat with sushi and salad, too. So, it's not just barbecue. If you're a vegetarian, you're welcome, too.